Wow, that fitment though. <laughs> it just nukes the tires. It just did a burnout. Like, like it's just like. <laughs> was that crazy or what? Dude, I thought the thing was gonna freaking go like this. Drip better, back and better run out of the way. Yeah. <laughs> she doesn't even have earplugs. You're crazy. Fine. You're crazy. I'm fine. Don't worry You're about insane. It. Oh my god. What's up guys, Larry Chen here. Welcome to another episode of Hunigan Autofocus. We are in Japan and we are actually at HKS today. My friends from Yokohama Tire and KW Suspension invited us out to cover Japanese car culture in and around Tokyo Auto Salon. Today we're gonna feature some cars that really inspired me over the years in terms of car culture and also in terms of livery and just it's just one of those things where it's a rite of passage i guess to see these cars and to photograph these cars behind me we have three Wait, is that a supra, oh, a supra. Is that a supra? Oh, yes that's a supra <laughs> so behind me we have three amazing a90 supra builds all three from hks as you could see up there, that's Mount Fuji. Uh, this facility is kind of amazing. HKS is pretty much Japan's biggest tuner. They don't just do tuning though, they actually do a lot of industry in the car world. The crazy thing is these three cars were literally just at Tokyo Auto Salon, at the HKS booth, and also that one was at the Yokohama booth. Let's go over these three cars before we get to the rest of the collection. This first one here is more of a street build. It has the HKS body kit on it. It's one of those things where they have a lot of prototype parts on it, including the exhaust, but they have some awesome endless brakes on it, Advan wheels. The interesting thing is it actually has Advan Apex V601 tires on it. They're actually not available in Japan. They're available in the US. And these are the same tires that I ran on my Mustang SEMA build. So sitting next to the street build is this drift car that uh, Tanaguchi actually drove at Goodwood Festival of Speed. It's kind of one of the first A90 drift cars, but it's so clean. I love the way it looks. Everything about it is awesome. As you can see, it does not have the B58 anymore. It has a 2JZ. Amazing. The last car here was actually at the Yokohama booth. It's uh, built by HKS, but it's actually owned by Arito and he has many Supras. He has a more street version of A90, which we actually had a chance to check out at his shop, but this is gonna be a little more wild. The crazy thing about this one is that it has concept tires on it, which is so weird. I've never really seen anything like this. So it's called the Advan Neova Concept, and they're like a cross between the new AO52, which is kind of more on the inside, and that's more for wet traction, and the pattern on the outside, which is uh, more for dry traction, is from the ADO8R. It's uh, 
pretty cool to see a tire with two different treads on it, one a newer version and one an older version, and they both do different things. It'll be cool to see them actually make this tire. This is pretty much the only car that has this tire now. It's pretty cool to see it out in the open. We're gonna get some pictures of these and we're gonna actually check out the rest of their collection as well. So we are actually going upstairs to their heritage collection where they have a lot of their older race cars as well as race engines. We're gonna meet up with a representative from HKS. So uh, Masaya here is going to show us a little bit about the collection. Um, we've been walking around doing uh, feature cars, but uh, before he has to go, we're gonna do a quick walk around in the collection and he's gonna kind of let us know some of the interesting things that they have here. So what is this room? We, we call it the museum. We've had uh, some of our older machinery that uh, doesn't get shown outside so much. Uh, rather than just collecting dust in the corner of a warehouse, we had a little bit of a presentation area for our customers as well. And then across the walls, you'll see a timeline of some of the things. We actually used this for one of our presentations, I think for our 40th anniversary, maybe something like that, to show some of the milestones of our development. So you'll see uh, in the background, some of the things that we've done across the years and also some of the cars from, from our past that you, you might not have seen uh, in some time. Wow, okay. So this is a drag car. Yep, this is the A70 based Supra drag car as you can uh, see here. Supra, so this was uh, built way back in the day. This one is actually not the original chassis. It's, uh, I think it's pro stock class chassis uh, or something like that. Back when uh, drag racing was much more of a, a popular thing in Japan, uh, we started with this and then we also built one with the A80 uh, shaped car, uh, which we ran with both a 2JZ engine and uh, I think uh, with a 3UZ V8 as well. And uh, the newer car I know for sure ran in the mid sixes. Uh, this one I think uh, was a seven or eight second car. Wow, and you got a couple formula cars here? Yep, open wheel so cars. we got, uh, this is a Formula 3 machine. We actually did a lot of development on uh, engines for Formula 3. And I believe it's a Mitsubishi based engine uh, in those. And we did some development to create our own original engines. You'll see some of them across the wall there. Uh, in the Mac. This is uh, an F3000 chassis. And uh, this one is a little bit special uh, because this was the chassis that we used to test an engine concept that we tried to make, uh, which at the time we wanted to create an engine that would conform to the Formula One regulations of the time. If I, in fact, if I take you over here, you'll see. This is the engine that uh, we built as an original engine. Our founder and uh, president until a few years ago, Hiroyuki Hasegawa, uh, started this company wanting to build race engines. That was his dream. Uh, and after a couple of years, business wasn't going so great. Uh, so then he moved towards 
producing turbocharger kits for naturally aspirated cars back in 1974, uh, which was a first in Japan uh, for sure in the aftermarket. Uh, but of course, he never managed to really let go of his dreams of building race engines. So this is some of that coming to, to life. And this was the pinnacle of it. Uh, so a three and a half litre V12 engine that would have conformed to the regulations of Formula One uh, at the time that it was built, even with uh, regular high octane gasoline that you could find from you know, your average uh, station down the street, it would produce uh, over 650 horsepower. I think about 675 horsepower would rev to over 10,000. I think about 12,000 uh, that the car would rev to. There's actually some very, very old VHS footage of the F3000 chassis with this engine. Uh, in it, uh, screaming. It's some pretty special uh, footage there. Wow, and this is so cool to see two uh, non-Japanese cars running the HKS livery. Yes, so uh, this one here is, well, we call it the Opel Vectra. It's technically a uh, Vauxhall Cavalier. <laughs> This was uh, ran, I think, in the JTCC, Japanese Touring Car uh, Championships. And then this one here, the Mercedes uh, CLK, I think it is. And this one ran in the, uh, the JGTC, which was the championship before it became Super GT. And uh, we ran this one for uh, a couple of years as well as part of our efforts to do more and more motorsports so that we can uh, understand how we can bring that into uh, road performance tuning uh, as well. That uh, Alteza there mm -hmm. is um, pretty famous. That's TRB01. So the original Tsukuba record breaker car of the series. So we spoke about the CT230R Evo. That was originally labeled the TRB02. Uh, and then more recently, we have TRB03, which was the uh, Toyota 86 base uh, talent tech car that we ran under 50 seconds at Tsukuba. And then uh, the TRB04, which was the Suzuki Swift based uh, car, which at the time uh, that we ran it, we set the record for the fr fastest front wheel drive car at Tsukuba. But this is the original uh, Tacuba record breaker car, TRB01. So this is based loosely on the Alteza, which is the Toyota I, uh, sorry, Lexus IS in other parts of the world. Wait, but so this wasn't actually a time attack car. This is all out, no yeah, so rules, one, anything. This was, so this was built very much from the ground up to be a, an out and out uh, fast car for, for performance. So at the time, there wasn't so many established rules of time attack. So it was just a case of, well, let's put everything that we've learned from all the race cars that we've just looked at and everything to build something to, to challenge for the fastest possible lap at Tsukuba. Um, and that's where we came up with the, uh, the 3SGT turbo kit. What do we have here? This, this is, is interesting. This is a slightly interesting thing. This is a concept that we built. The, bo the big boss wanted to do a lot of stuff that was original. You might know about the, the Zero R, which was based around the R32 Skyline, and then it had a full tuning package from HKS, original aero uh, body kit. It was on it. And then when it was sold, it was sold as a complete car. So it wasn't sold as a modified R32 Skyline. It was sold as an HKS Zero R with its own badge on it. Imagine someone like Roof, or Alpina, uh, they sell the car as their own brand rather than a modified version of the car, even though it's kind of obvious what the original car was. This is another car that we, uh, we had the idea of producing as a complete car from HKS rather than as uh, a modified version of the original car. Have any idea what the original car of this underneath is? I have no idea. This looks crazy. I mean, Miata kind of comes to mind a little bit. Yeah, it's a little smaller than that. It's actually a Suzuki Cappuccino base. Oh, see, we never got those in the US, yeah. so. <laughs> I would love to have one, but yeah. This is insane. 
So this is um, one of their newer buildings here at HKS. Of course you have the uh, really iconic Group A R32 GTR, the Godzilla. We're doing a full feature on that, so I'm not gonna talk about that too much. They have some awesome Suzuki Swifts. Another A90 uh, build with no body kit. The interesting thing about this is that it has brand new Advan wheels that kind of give a little more caliper clearance because um, pretty much most wheels, while you can fit them on the car, it won't actually clear bigger brakes. So this is pretty cool. And of course it's running Advan Niova 8008Rs. This is a very, very famous car. I'm sure you guys have seen it uh, when it was red. This is actually a time attack car and it broke the Tsukuba record about 10 years ago. This is the C230R, but now it's actually converted into a natural gas vehicle. We're gonna do a full feature on this, so stay tuned for that. Over here we have a GT86, another Suzuki Swift, their really cool Subaru STI build, and of course the Suzuki Jimny, I think. Is that what this is? I don't even know what that is. MX-5. So this one is interesting. This is their R34 GTR development car. So pretty much a lot of the parts that they developed for this car were done on this. This is just so cool. Look at this. Robson seats. Everything about this thing. Endless brakes. The wheels. Of course it's running on 808Rs. So this is actually where they keep a lot of the cars that they use more often in terms of taking them to shows or heritage events. We're gonna spend some time here and we're gonna photograph them as much as we can. We're gonna feature Godzilla, which is the Group A R32, and then we're gonna feature the C230R Time Attack Evo, which is uh, very legendary. It's one of those things where I've always wanted to see this car in person. All right, so there goes the door. We are actually in the HKS dyno room and we're actually in the HKS dyno room here in Japan. They're gonna let me dyno this car, which is insane, or at least try anti-lag on it. I'll spit some flames. And the crazy thing is because the door is gone, I'll be able to see them come out of here because the exhaust is right here. All right, so it is a 2J. And um, as you can see from this dyno chart, the maximum power is 836 horsepower to the wheels. So it's probably closer to 1,000 horsepower to the crank. This is pretty much uh, Nobuhiro Taniguchi's drift toy, which is actually built by Daigo Saito at his shop, Fat Five Racing. It's something else. There's no regulation for this build. It's pretty much anything goes. And it's basically turned into this tube chassis drift car at this point. It's um, something else. It's really cool. Earplugs in, cause it's really, really loud. Okay. Pull it. Yeah. Okay. And IV, ignition, uh -huh. and uh, fuel pump. Okay. We are pumping. Oh, wow. Uh -huh. Wow. Very cool. Okay. Anti lag. Okay. I need a drift car now. I mean, not this crazy, but still, I need a drift car. Okay, so that was insane. <laughs> That's kind of like the welcome to HKS uh, thing. They let you sit in uh, 
Taniguchi's car and they let you play with the anti-lag. That was so insane. The first hit, kind of, I felt it in my heart. I felt it, it, it pretty much shook my whole body. Like it was really surprising. It was this insane shock wave that, uh, you, you, I just can't explain it. It really is like sitting next to an uh, explosion. <laughs> That's something I'll never forget. So stoked on it. Definitely, thank you so much to HKS for having us. Thanks again to Yokohama Tire and Kirabi Suspension for inviting us to Japan. We still have a couple days left, which is awesome. We're gonna keep shooting and we're gonna keep pushing hard to show you guys the best car culture in Japan. That's a wrap for today.